In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect up to your Raspberry Pi remotely using uh, SSH, which is Secure Socket Shell. So let's start by um, with the very basics, just attaching a Wi-Fi dongle to your Raspberry Pi. Here's such a thing, it's a USB Wi-Fi adapter. It used to be in the early days of Raspberry Pi that you had to pick the right one of these or it just wouldn't work, it had to be a certain chipset. These days I think you're hard pressed to find um, a, one of these that won't work with your Raspberry Pi, but it's still worth when you're buying it looking for one that's advertised as working with Raspberry Pi. And installing it is just a matter of uh, pushing it into the USB port um, and then we'll go and have a look at what you have to do on your Raspberry Pi in software terms to get it to work. You might find that when you, if you have your Raspberry Pi powered up when you plug the USB Wi-Fi adapter in, it may cause your Raspberry Pi to reset. That's just the, the surge in current that the Wi-Fi adapter needs. On the latest version of Raspbian, setting up Wi-Fi is really straightforward. Um, if you look in the top right hand side of the system tray up here, you'll find that you've got a little uh, Wi-Fi symbol and you can, when you plug your USB Wi-Fi adapter in, you'll get a little pop-up that'll show you networks that you can connect to and all you have to do is click on the network you want them to connect to and it'll then prompt you for your password and that's it, it'll connect you. Before we can connect using SSH, there are a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to enable SSH on Raspbian. And the second thing we need to do is make a note of the IP address of our Raspberry Pi before we disconnect the screen and keyboard and everything and um, try and use it remotely. Because once we've done that, we won't have another way of finding out what the IP address is. So let's start by finding the IP address. Open up an LX terminal session. And in there, you just need to type the command host name minus and then a capital I. And this will give us uh, back a little number, and in this case it's 192.168.1.23. Uh, this will vary a bit, well, this, it won't be the same for you, it's very unlikely to be the same for you. This is the IP address allocated dynamically to your Raspberry Pi when it's connected by Wi-Fi to your home network. Okay, so in this case, 192.168.1.23, made a note of that. The next thing we need to do is enable SSH, and we use that with the Raspberry Config tool, which allows you to configure a lot of things about the, the Raspberry Pi. You have to run this as sudo, so the command is sudo raspberry-config. I'm not calling config, config. Okay, we've got a number of options here. We can expand the file system, various other things. And to actually find the SSH option, you have to go all the way down to Advanced Options, hit Enter, and then here we are, we've got uh, SSH on A4, and it says Enable or Disable the Remote Command Line. So again, hit Enter, and it says, would you like the, SS2, the SSH server enabled or dis disabled? And we want it to be enabled, so again, hit Enter. Okay. SSH server enabled. Good. And finally we can, uh, we can finish the Raspberry config tool to get back to the command line. And there we go. That's it. We should have everything set. So what would happen now is when we, if we were to turn off our Raspberry Pi and unplug it, when we plug it back in again, it should connect over Wi-Fi. And because we know the IP address of our Raspberry Pi, we should be able to connect to it without having it connected to keyboard or mouse or monitor. We should be able to connect to it from another computer. So let's try that next. Let's start by looking at how you'd use a Mac to connect remotely to your Raspberry Pi. And then later on, we'll have a look at how you'd do the same thing in Windows. Here we've got a terminal session on the Mac. And we just use to, and this is exactly the same as well if you're using Linux, by the way. So the command is ssh, and then we have the IP address that we made a note of earlier, which is 
dot one dot twenty three, and then minus L for the login name and pi, because that's what we want to connect as. First time you do this, you'll be asked, "Are you sure you want to continue to connect?" And we say yes to that. This is just doing the certificate thing. And now it's asking us for the password, which is Raspberry, unless you've changed it. Okay, and there we are. You can see that the command prompt has changed, so it now says pi at Raspberry Pi, and we're on the Raspberry Pi file system, so we can have a look in the directory. We can change directories to wherever we like and run various commands. So obviously you can, you can run Python commands from here, uh, using just Python space and then the name of the Python program you want to run. But you need to bear in mind that this is a command line interface, there's no graphical interface. So if you're trying to run a program that uses uh, graphics or uses the TK Inter library or the Pygame library, they're not going to work over SSH. You're going to have to find another way of connecting to the Raspberry Pi. If you're using Windows, you'll need to download yourself some software called Putty. Very useful software, this. Well worth getting if you're a Windows user. When you click on Putty, double click on Putty, it'll open up a little configuration window here, and you'll see that we want to, it's prompting us to enter the host name, and that's where we type the IP address that we found before. So 192.68.1.23. And we click on open, and we'll see that that's put a security alert up saying warning potential security breach. This is just the same message effectively saying that there's a certificate transfer going on that we got when we were using the Mac. So we can just say yes to that, and it'll prompt us to log in as, and we need to say hi, password, raspberry. And there we go, we're in, and we can browse the file system and uh, interact with it in whatever way we like, just as if we were actually on the Raspberry Pi itself.